So from what I understand when I grew up, it was normal to be part of the RSPB and part of shooting organisations and you could do both and they kind of interlinked the organisations. How has it changed so drastically over the last even five, ten years that these organisations now seem to just butt heads? Well, it's not, it's not simple. It, it's fairly complex, but it's also a, a mis there's an element of misconception here because our, my view is that the vast majority of people who are members of the RSPB and the vast majority of shooting people have not got a problem with each other at all. Mm -hmm. um, I don't find any difficulty in getting on with people that don't shoot but like are interested in natural history and birds and so on. And a lot of my a lot of people have no difficulty with what I do. So at that level, there isn't a problem. Okay. The problem is that that level, which is the bulk of the people, have, have effectively no no levers to pull to control what's going on it, strategically. Mm -hmm. And what's happened, I think, is that if you go back and I'm uh, I'm obviously a, a significantly older than you. Um, I can remember when it wasn't just that we got on, it was that we were the same people. It wasn't unheard of that you had Grousemore owners who were, who were sitting on the board of the RSP. It was perfectly normal for people um, to, to help to sit on the NCC and all this sort of stuff. Um, what's happened over time is that as the resources that have gone into the conservation industry have increased, it's become more pro professionalised and more excluding. So it is now very difficult for somebody who isn't of that model mm -hmm. to be on the board of anything. If you look at a board of a wildlife trust, you're very, very unlikely to find anybody who is um, not of the mould, who's not an academic or not, a, not interested in, in um, selling some product or whatever. They're, they're all the same little group of people. You don't get many landowners, you hardly ever get, I haven't heard of a keeper. So and the, this is what it said in your book, that most of kind of Natural England and the RSPB, it's all kind of the same people just swapping yeah. jobs and moving between each other. They're, they're almost entirely interchangeable. And, yeah. and, and it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because if somebody says at interview, what do you think about X? And you make the wrong answer, you're not going to get a job. Yeah. So if, if what we do becomes X, and you give the, get the wrong answer, then you're never going to get it. Yeah. And that that is a serious problem because it just means that you are effectively excluding people intentionally from a process. And the awful thing is that if you consider what the conservation industry, what the regulators doing, what what the organisations are, are looking at, it is how you manage the landscape. And effectively, what the processes are doing now is excluding the people that own and manage the landscape from yeah, those decisions. From any decision. Which is mind-bogglingly yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, why does anybody think that if you give the regulator more power and the conservation industry more money, mm -hmm. it's going to work? It hasn't worked so far. Why would it? Yeah. If you want to find a fool in the countryside, bring one with you. Because farmers and landowners aren't stupid. They didn't acquire this land and manage it for years successfully by being dim. Yeah. They, they might be treated that way by people, but they're not. Yeah. And so whatever you do to them, they will find a way of doing what they want to do. And so you either, you either find, what, find common ground, and there's masses of it, mm -hmm. and say, look, you know, how, can, how can we work together to make it? But that's not what's happening. What's happening, bizarrely, is that somebody turns up with a clipboard yeah. and starts telling you to stop it. Yeah. And it, well, how's that going to work? Exactly. And this is one point that I've made a few times to different people. There's a huge resource in landowners, gamekeepers, you know, farmers. They know the land. They know every part of that land. And I think that's a huge benefit and would be a huge benefit to all of these other organisations who now exclude them. I know that's a point you make uh, quite often in your blogs. Isn't it? That's brilliant. And yeah. I couldn't agree with it more. Yeah. It, you achieve, you will always achieve more by by cooperating with people and finding common ground to work on than by creating barriers and walls. Mm -hmm. And and what's going on now in the uplands is 
extraordinary. People, I, I met a, a perfectly charming man who had been given responsibility for, for dealing with Heather Burning in Defra. Uh, and one of the things he said, you know, quite godlessly, was that until he'd been given the job, he knew nothing about Heather Burning. Yeah. And he told a room full of people yeah. who had who'd been managing Moors for years. And who cared deeply about it. And who cared deeply about yeah. it. And then explained that, you know, th this, th this should happen and that should. I mean, you wouldn't do it to people that built, built walls. You know. that, that's the thing. It's almost how does he have the right to tell you yeah. what to do when, you know, that is affecting a gamekeeper's everyday life and how he actually does his job. And I've just I've just been told yesterday that that there's now a rule you can't cut heather above one thousand two hundred and fifty feet or something. I mean I didn't know. Well, why that yeah. height, and why, and and added to which. The people that have been revegetating moors have been cutting masses of heather above that height mm. all over the place. Yeah. So where did that come from? Yeah. Who was it discussed with? Why was, why did somebody make a decision? And the problem you a problem you've got is that the regulator in in England, in natural England, is in an almost unique position. I don't know any other regulator. I was a regulator, not I wasn't in that position. They make the rules, mm -hmm. they then enforce the rules. They then decide whether you've broken the rules, and then they decide what the penalty will be. So they're, they're on law. So that level of the police haven't can't do that. Yeah. You know the local authority trading standards office can't do that. Nobody can do that apart from them. Yeah. And when I put that to them, they say, "Oh, we don't make the laws." No, no, you don't make the laws, but you make the rules. Mm -hmm. So the law says you've got can do this, but then you say, "No, no, one thousand two hundred and fifty feet or whatever it is," and that's a rule. And everybody goes, "Why does it make nothing to do with you?" Yeah because I say so. When people start saying, because I say so, that's the time to run. Very because the, thing, yeah. it's, it's become completely it's borderline immoral. Mm -hmm. If you can't justify in detail why you wanted somebody to do something, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Surely shouldn't be enforcing it on them. And I think recently, it kind of brings me on to my next question, recently with COP26, which has been in the news everywhere, and the environment becoming so important, a well-known presenter who is anti-shooting recently said that the shooting community needs to be more involved in the environment and protecting it and they all need to join the RSPB to help with environment to which the GWCT replied and said well they should drop their campaign against shooters then because we already help the environment so much and half of me thought I agree with that the other half thought did we miss an opportunity there to come to the table and say, okay, well, let's talk about the environment. You know, instead of arguing between two organizations, did we miss that opportunity because it was that well-known presenter who gets so many people's backs up to just come to the table and be sensible and say, let's talk. Well, curiously, I think you're all right. Mm. I think both your views are right and both their views are right. Yeah. In this, it is, it's no good talking the talk, you don't walk the walk. If yeah. The, the problem with what was being suggested was that it was it was joining a demonstration. Yeah. Personally, I think the demonstration w was probably pretty pointless. Yeah. Um, in terms of the impact it was going to have on anything, and if you've got a certain amount of time available to you, then you should be you should be using it to the to where it has the most effect, not the least. But the generality of the point is true: that people that shoot. Do care about the climate they do care about the environment and they yeah. should be prepared to stand up and be counted correct the, the other point of view was true too mm -hmm. it would be much easier to do that and, and and it would help if we stopped fighting like cats in a bag yeah. about the marginal bits mm -hmm. and actually got together and said look you know shooting you might not like it you like it that's not really an issue because yeah. he doesn't need um, chicken you do so let's not fight about all those pointless things you've parked that over there yeah. let's talk about the things we do care about which is the broader environment biodiversity and everything else so that's true too mm -hmm. both of those things are true and and you're you were right that that in the sense that we did miss an opportunity um, and sometimes you do things because it creates bridges and links yeah not because it's going to change the attitude of the uh, president of Russia or or Japan or anything. Yeah. And so, and, and the, the, the other side, if you like, are good at what might be represented as virtue signaling. 
so that you go, you, you don't go there expecting to make any difference, mm -hmm. but you go there to be seen to be in, in the group. Yeah. And, and that's something that we, we should consider, but it is also something we do. Yeah. So you know, I am to know that GWCT sought to be at COP26, but they, in their usual way, they sought to be there in a scientific, technical way, yeah. not in a demonstrating way, because as it happens, GWC is a charity and their interpret interpretation of the charity laws is that they shouldn't be banging a drum at a demonstration. Yeah. Other people take a different view. But there is absolutely a need for shooting people to, to engage mm -hmm. with the broader church of conservation. Yeah. Even if people don't want them. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm a member of, of, of several wildlife trusts, I'm a member of the RSPB, because while I disagree with the RSPB about some things, you'd be mad not to think they don't do good. Exactly, yeah. Because they do. Yeah. Now, I think they could be do it cheaper and they could do it with better value and they could stop taking common cause with people that are really quite unpleasant. Mm -hmm. But do they do good? Of course they do. Yeah. Is it worth me spending three pounds a month? Of course it is. And I think through social media channels, there's a lot of, the RSPB are very good at putting information out there. And certain members definitely put information out there to get people's backs up. But I feel that one thing we don't do a good job at is reply to those things. Mm -hmm. You know, if false information is put out there, why are we not saying, well, actually, that's not true. Here's the fact. Here's the actual figure, which your book is brilliant at and is full of them. Why are we not putting those out there? But I think it's because a lot of the shooting community are almost scared to do that because of the backlash they get. Well, that's, that's one of the things you do so brilliantly, I think, is, is putting things in a measured and sensible way mm -hmm. and showing people on your blog. That, but it, you're absolutely right. The, the, just engage. Yeah. And people, the pro, the, one of the problems with social media, they're sort of two echo chambers. Yeah. We shout into our echo chamber, they shout into theirs. I certainly put things on other people's stuff. People don't like it and you yeah. get abused. But, but the, you, you should always try, I think, to do two things. One is not to be put off by the nasties. Yeah. Because there's always some of them. And yeah. why should a good person be stopped doing, from doing good by a bad person? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't. And the other thing is that I, I have never se I never sought to achieve, although I have done it once or twice, a Damascene conversion. I don't expect somebody who is currently sort of lying in front of a, a lorry on the M25 to suddenly, after a conversation with me, suddenly buy a, a shotgun and yeah. it join a, a pheasant syndicate, mm -hmm. still less a, a, a grave syndicate. That, that's not what I expect. But what, what I try to achieve is if somebody thinks I'm Beelzebub, if they can just think I'm not a nice person, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. If somebody thinks I'm not a nice person, if they think, well, I'm all right. And you should always aim for a, a degree change, mm -hmm. not a 360 degree change. And if everybody did that, then if you add up all the people that go shooting, if everybody could get one person to feel better about it, in the next 12 months, yeah, and then the next 12 months. You very soon get to a position where the, the, the argument had gone. Yeah, and that's what I try and do. There's always going to be people who's against this. There's always going to be you know, people who have very strong opinions. But if you educate, like you say, one person who slightly changes their view, I think that's really important to do. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem whatsoever with people being against things. Yeah. I'm against things. Mm. But the problem I've got is people have been against me and what I do, and trying to stop me doing what I yeah. do. So the world's full of opinions. That's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So the more you can sort of de-weaponize this thing to, to just calm people down and say, look, hang on, I'm not that bad. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a loving father and a, you know, I'm kind to animals. I mean, what, what's the problem? So, exactly. and, the, and the difficulty the ground shooting's got is numerically it's relatively small. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to be rude about somebody you've never met. So, you know, I can be as rude as I like about the Martians, mm -hmm. you know, because I've never met one and yeah. you've never met one and you'll probably believe anything I tell you about them. Mm -hmm. But your Uncle Trevor, you, if I'm rude about your Uncle Trevor, if you've got one, um, th th and you go, hang on, no, no, he's yeah. a nice chap. You know? So th the more you can be separated from the common herd and, and isolated, and it's easier when you're numerically small. Yeah. 
but don't put up with it. Mm -hmm. Just engage. Yeah.